have a look at x. How, how could you make a statement about x that has to do with theta? Well, you're going to use the cosine rule. Big flashing red light. The next line, the thing you're supposed to prove, has cos in it. Right? So do you see what's going? Do you see how the gears are turning in my head? I've got to get rid of an x. Got to replace it with a cos theta. What's the natural connection between those? It's the cosine rule. Does that make sense? So because if I show you right now, if I had shown you this line here, or this working, and you can go ahead and you can start to write some of this if you like. If I had shown you this, your natural question would be, certainly my question is when I read a pair of a set of solutions, what made you think to do that? What made you think to go there immediately? And the answer is, I didn't go there immediately. I went through that 30 second thinking process that you helped me through to work out, this is where I've got to go, this is where I'm coming from, what is the most logical connection? And the answer is the cosine rule, okay? So you can see, uh, once you've identified all the right pieces, it falls out fairly seamlessly, okay? Okay. Just like before, I promise I will come back to this so that you can take pictures and what have you. I just wanted you to see the essence of it. And you can see I stated the cosine rule. I stated it with x squared as the subject. That makes the substitution uh, to here as minimal as possible because literally x squared is equal to a squared plus ay. That's what I just proved. Okay. So now that you see that, I want you to think again about this question. Let's get rid of all this fluff. I promise I'll come back. Again, think. This is weird. This is weird. We very seldom um, see inequalities in the middle of geometry questions. So your brain kind of weirds out a little bit and you're like, where do I begin with this? Okay. Well, how have I been going through this so far? To answer part two, what did I look at? I looked at part one. To answer part three, what did I look at? I looked at part two. So the most natural place for you to go to even get started on this is the immediately previous line. So this is a statement about why. And then I want to make another further statement about why. Have a look at this. What's disappeared off here? What's gone? This guy is gone, right? So something has to happen with this. Something to do with an inequality. Hmm. Do I have any inequalities that I know about that are related to cos? Hmm. Hmm. You need to think really hard about this. I want you to track your mind back along the last few topics that we've done. Clearly the big thing in this whole question is geometry. So that was the immediately previous topic that we had to look at, right? Before uh, geometry proofs, deductive proofs, we looked at calculus. We did some time. Is this a calculus question? No. Nothing to do with calculus. Okay, no differentiation in sight or anything like that. What was before that? Trig. Well, that's a natural place to think about some knowledge. I want you to go back one more step, just for the sake of it. What was before trig? There was something we learned that was a really important foundation for calculus. Do you remember what it was? It starts with an F. Functions. Functions, right? Now, trigonometric functions are a really important part of um, functions, right? Because they're a very important um, thing that you can do algebra with. So think back to functions. Think back to what you know about trigonometric functions and the inequalities you stated within that. You wrote hundreds of inequalities in the functions topic. What were they talking about? Hmm. You know how much I love this function. In the functions topic, you could tell me where this function goes, right? Where it exists. Do you remember what that was called? Where this function exists? You called it domain and range. What are the domain and range of this function? Not a rhetorical question. What, what are they? All real values of x. For the range, you know it's a parabola, so it's x is above, uh, y is above something. Okay, if my memory serves, I'm pretty sure it's negative a quarter, but you of course can find that out yourself. Okay, so have a look at this for a second. Function. Function here. Inequality down here. Yes? Okay. Oops. Domain. Range. 
Not a rhetorical question. What's the domain of cos x? It's still all real values, isn't it? What's the domain? Uh, sorry, what's the range? What's the range? Minus 1. Do 1. OK, think really hard. Think really, really hard. Look at what's being asked of you. OK? You're trying to get to here from here. Hmm. Hmm. If this is true, if cos x is between negative 1 and 1, then it stands to reason, I'm going to scroll a little bit, can't go too far, that cos of x or cos of theta or cos of anything is going to be greater than negative 1. Do you agree? Like that's the lowest it can be. You've got to be above that. So if I doubled both sides, in many ways, in many regards, inequalities are just like equations, right? We noticed this before. Not always, but a lot of ways. So I can double both sides. Do you agree with that? Now, why am I doubling both sides? Come back, have a look. Why am I doubling both sides? Because I don't actually have cos theta in my inequality. I have 2 cos theta, don't I? So I double. I slap a minus sign on the front. Why do I slap a minus sign? Look again, look at your question. Do you see it's not actually 2 cos theta, it's, mi it's minus 2 cos theta. Right? That, that's what I have. But actually I don't have minus 2 cos theta, there's something else out the front, isn't there? What's there? So what do I do to both sides to put a 1 there? I should add 1 to both sides, right? That looks suspicious, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I actually don't have just a 1 minus 2 cos theta. There's an A out the front, isn't there? Like you, you proved that. You proved that. We proved it together for the previous line. But what is this? What is this thing here? That's why. Now, what did I do? What did I do that you didn't do? Okay. Now, to be fair, because I've been working with all of these topics for a longer time, okay, um, every topic is kind of like, uh, well, actually, since we did that recently, they're kind of like points on the circumference of a circle, right? Um, every different point in mathematics links to all the rest, right? And you get this complicated web of relationships where the more topics you get, the more interconnections you create. Okay? And what do, we, what do we call on here? We called on some deductive geometry because we were proving that similarity. right? We had to do some work with trig. And this last bit was calling on something in functions which we hardly ever. Like you probably think, why do we ever spend all that time about domain and range? Well, it tells you everything you need to know about a function and where it can possibly go. But these are the only pieces, all of which you knew. Now that you see it, you're like, oh, oh, that does make sense. But you just didn't think of that combination before. Okay? 